In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to add a hover fill effect to your button on Elementor. So this is what we're going to be creating. So as you can see, whenever I hover over this, it fills from the left. And then whenever I hover out, it's going to unfill from the right. So that's what we're going to be creating here. I'm also going to be showing you how to fill this from the top and the bottom as well. If you end up finding this video helpful, make sure to like it for the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos. I do have courses on Elementor and WordPress, and I always have those down in the description in case you guys are interested. Now, I hope you guys enjoy. So I am going to be writing out some CSS. So I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. Now I love CSS and hopefully you guys will enjoy it too. Now if you don't want to follow along and write out the CSS, I will have a link down in the description where you guys can copy the CSS. Now let's go ahead and actually begin. So the first thing that we need to do is drag and drop our button. So go ahead and do that. And then go ahead and set your button to the center. Go into text and we're going to call this book a call and then go into style and our typography is going to be enter and we're going to set our weight to 500 and i think our font will maybe set it to 12 or 13 we'll kind of see how that looks on here um you know what let's set this to 16 just in case and then set it to uppercase now go into your text color set that to black my background is going to be set to white and my border radius is going to be set to zero and we're going to add a border to this choose solid we'll add a one pixel and make sure that's set to black all right so now let's go ahead and add some padding so let's go ahead and do 20 and then let's unselect this and then from the left side, we're gonna do 60. And on the right, we're also gonna do 60 as well. Now, I wanna give my, uh, my button a little more breathing room. So I think I'm gonna make my text a little bit smaller. There we go. Now that looks pretty good there. So I'm gonna set it to about, uh, let's do 14 is, it's pretty nice. Okay, so now from here, Let's go ahead and add our CSS because now everything's all set. But you know what? Let's do one more thing here. And let's add an icon to this because I feel like that will be very nice. So look for an arrow. And we're going to be choosing this one. But of course, you can choose whatever icon you want. And I'm going to set this to after. And there we go. So we have some clean button here. So now let's go into advanced. And then let's add a class to this button. And we're going to call this my dash BTN for button. And then go into your custom CSS. So go ahead and type out period my dash BTN. And then we're going to target Elementor. So type in dot Elementor dash button. And then we're gonna add a pseudo element and we're gonna set this to before and go ahead and add curly brackets. So basically you want two colons and then before and then curly brackets. And then in between our curly brackets, and since we're calling a pseudo element, we always have to add content, colon, single quotes, and that's it. And make sure you end it with the semicolon. And then after that, we're going to do a position, colon, absolute. And then end that with a semicolon. And then add a background, colon, and make that black, and end it with the semicolon. And then we're going to do a width of 100%, and a height of 100%. And I forgot to end these with a semicolon. So let me go ahead and do that. And there we go. So as you can tell, we have a rectangle here filled with black. So I want to position this right on top of our bun. So go ahead and type in top semicolon zero. 
and then from the left side semicolon zero and 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 both of those with a semicolon now as you can see this rectangle is way too huge so we need to shrink it down to our button so basically what we need to do is when you're on your button go into positioning and set this to on your width set it to inline there we go now automatically I have mine set to the center, but yours would probably be set to default. So make sure you set that to the center or wherever you want to place your bun. You can set it to the start as well, but I will set mine to the center. Okay. So now let's go back to our bun. So now let's go ahead and type in transform colon scale, and we're going to do a scale X. And then we're going to go ahead and add some brackets. And then in between this, we're going to do zero. And as you can see, now we can't see our rectangle. So let's go ahead and end this off with a semicolon, but don't worry, we'll worry about that later. So now go ahead and type in transform dash origin, and we're gonna set this to the right. So basically, whenever I hover off my bun, I want it to unfill from the right. So now let's go ahead and set up a transition and this is just going to allow pretty much everything to work very smoothly. It's going to transition my fill effect because if I don't add a transition, it's just going to go straight to the background and it's not going to have that fill effect. So now on our transition, let's go ahead and add transform because that is what we're targeting transform. So basically what we're saying on transform, we want it to have a duration of 0.4. So I'm going to type in just 0.4 seconds. And then we're going to do an ease. Now that should be it for our pseudo element. So now we're going to go ahead and add our hover class. So basically we're just going to copy this. We can copy all of it and I'm going to paste it down here. And then right after my elementor dash button, I'm going to go ahead and add a colon and hover. And then after that, make sure that you have your pseudo element, two colons, and then before, and then after our before, go ahead and add some curly brackets. And then within these curly brackets, we just have to add a transform scale X brackets. And in between this, we're going to put one. And then I'm going to go ahead and end this off with a semicolon. Now under here, we're going to add another transform origin. So I'm going to type in transform dash origin. And instead of the right, we want it. So then whenever we hover on this, it fills towards the left side instead of the right. That's why we're gonna have that effect where it fills on the left side and then it leaves on the right side. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in left and then end this with a um, semicolon and let's go ahead and see if this works. So now, as you can tell, whenever I hover over this, we have that cool fill effect where it ends up filling from the left and then it fills out from the right. Now, of course, if you just wanted it to go one way on your hover effect, just go ahead and remove this here. And then now if we hover over it, you will notice that it would just fill from one side and go right back to where it was. So, or we can set this to the left side and now it will fill from the left and it will fill out from the left as well. But I kind of like that other effect. So I'm going to leave it as is. Now, of course we are running into some issues. We can't see our text first of all. So go into your style and then go into um, hover and let's set our text to white. And now, as you can tell, we still can't see it. And there's not a problem with that. We just need to add some more CSS. So go back to your advanced, go to custom CSS. And what we need to do is just target our um, button title here. So go ahead and type in dot my dash button btn and then type in dot elementor dash button dash title or you know what i think it's sorry it's elementor dash button dash text instead and then we're going to go ahead and set a z index of one now, if we hover over this, huh. now you see why that's not working. It's because we haven't set our text to white yet. So 
let's go into style go into hover so you know what I ended up doing instead I didn't even notice I set up my background type to white so let's go to remove this and let's make this white here so now whenever we hover over this we can see our text so that's perfect so let me go back into advance and let me go into CSS here so now this is working really great but the only issue is that I don't see my icon now you would think that Elementor would for some reason have that option where I can add a color to my icon on hover but for some weird reason Elementor doesn't but hey we love Elementor so we're gonna keep using Elementor so let's go into um, advance on my button and let's just target the CSS and it's very simple so basically type in dot my dash button it's already saved on there which is cool so let's just go ahead and click enter and then let's target the elementor button so elementor button except after button we're going to do another dash and we're going to do icon instead and then we're going to add some curly brackets and let's go ahead and set my button to hover so right after my dash button go ahead and add a colon and let's set this to hover so basically what we're saying is whenever we hover over my button, I want it to do this specific action and we're targeting this button icon. So go ahead and type in color, colon, or you can just click enter and it will add a colon for you. So just type in white. There we go. So now if we hover over this, you will see that it's not turning white. <laughs> so what we need to do is just add a Z index of one so there we go now it's working now from what you can tell it's a little bit harsh to be honest i kind of want to add a smooth transition to this icon now i know that this is a small detail but the small details always count so let's go ahead and type in transition and let's target our color and if you don't know which color i'm talking about i'm talking about this one here so then we're going to set this to about one second. Oops. One second. And we're going to have a transition of ease. So now when we hover over this, you see that we have a more smooth transition, right? It's a lot better. And I kind of like that instead. Sep, let's make this transition happen a little bit sooner. So let's adjust the duration there to 0 0.5. All right. Or we can just do a 0.5. It doesn't really matter. It's pretty much the same thing there. Okay. So I almost forgot. So as a small bonus, I'm going to be showing you how to adjust your icon size. Because for some reason, Elementor doesn't have that option. But don't worry. We can add some CSS. So let's go back to our custom CSS. And at the bottom here, we're going to do something very easy. We're pretty much just going to copy what we already have here. And we're going to paste it right under it. And we're going to remove hover. And... And the colon and then remove everything else in here and then we're just gonna go ahead and add a scale or sorry type in transform scale and then go ahead and type in some brackets and we're gonna do a scale of 1.5 and we're gonna add some padding to this so some padding to the left should work and it's gonna be about five pixels and let's make sure that we end our transform here with a semicolon. And there we go. Now, if that is way too big for you, of course, you can shrink this to maybe a little bit smaller. We can do 1.3 instead. And then whenever we hover over this, it works perfectly. So I just wanted to show you guys that really quick. So one thing I wanted to show you guys is how we can fill this from the top and the bottom. So basically, if we go back into our custom CSS, and we have it set currently to um, transform right, but we can actually set these up to the top and the bottom. So this one is going to be the top. And then this is going to be, where are we? Where are we? This is going to be the bottom. And then we also got to change our transform scale. So instead of X, we're going to do Y because we want that to be set from the top and bottom. And then the other one here, we need to set this to Y. And it has to be a capital Y for both. So now whenever we hover over this, you will see that we'll have that fill effect from the bottom. And then it fills out from the top. 
but we can go ahead and switch these and maybe do bottom instead and then go ahead and do um, top from this one and there we have it now of course if you wanted to you can just completely remove this and it can just fill from the bottom there there we go now I believe that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Hopefully it wasn't too long and you did get a good understanding of my CSS code. If you do like these types of videos, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of my content. Now if you did enjoy this video a lot, make sure to like it for the YouTube algorithm. It is greatly appreciated and it helps out the channel quite a bit. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.